Yeah, just... I've seen a few a few battery tests, and this 13 Pro Max is getting is getting those sort of those sort of numbers. So, but that's 10 hours running, like watching 4K video, playing games and stuff, doing frame averaging. Maybe it could go yes, even probably. longer. Yes. Ba-bum. <laughs> 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 Hey, I'm David Addison and welcome back to the David Addison Show, episode 7 of the David Addison Show for the iPhoneography Podcast Network group. I say welcome back, I assume you've been here before, but if not, then David and today my guest is Mario Tomiak, the man after this show, not the myth. (laughs) Definitely a legend though. He will go into how long it took him to develop even longer, why he started developing even longer, the challenges that he faced, how he how he handled getting his app out there to you, the people, and how he feels about your response to his app even longer. So without further ado, here is my conversation with Mario Tomiak. Enjoy. So, Mario, thank you so much for joining me on episode seven of the David Addison Show. Myself, everyone else, we're all very excited to have you here. Uh, How's it going, dude? Yeah, it's going good. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. You were the first guest when I started my podcast. I was like, I need to get Mario on. (laughs) And (laughs) here you are. So I want to get right into it. If you're happy with that, uh, just, uh, yeah, sure. just one thing before I before I hit record, you were telling me that you were almost finished. You've almost finished the Android version of even longer. No, is that right? <laughs> For sure not. <laughs> <laughs> it will not come uh, any, anytime soon. <laughs> Maybe in a couple of. But years you mentioned uh, all the the um, iOS guys paid enough money to uh, to use the app. Maybe I can afford to do an Android one, but. Probably not. <laughs> you mentioned the Windows version, though. Windows? What's that? <laughs> Let me yeah, head to, to the I'm Windows. Sure you mentioned... Tell them, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Symbian, whatever Nokia runs. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just teasing you, and and the Android guys as well. So, um, you, um, it's just you behind, even longer. Yes. Is that right? There's no one else? It's just me. Just me. So you no. So you do everything. You don't outsource design, coding, marketing, no, anything nothing, like that. Nothing. It's all uh wow. my own. Yeah. At and least you until do this... now and maybe maybe in the future it will change, but for now it's all on me. Well, some might say I market your app for you. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> Enough, uh, I use it so often. Every yeah. picture shot with even longer. Uh, <laughs> but me and now, like a growing uh, growing list of people, but we'll get to that a, bit, a little bit later on. Because uh, you you do this with a full time job as well, right? Even longer is not your only your only gig. No, no. It, uh, I've got a full time uh, day job, normal job, in a big uh, glass corporation. So I have to do a, a lot of things, and uh, even longer as yeah. It, a side job. Yeah, I'm doing it on weekends, wow. on vacations, in the evenings. Sometimes, sometimes in a hotel room while on business trip, like now. I believe once when we were chatting, you were you were camping in a in a caravan and yes, you were working <laughs> working as well. <laughs> we were both mind. on. Sorry, yeah, go on. We were both on, on vacation, yeah. And um, yeah, in, in yeah. fact, it's, it's my most creative time. Yeah? Having uh, 14 days totally disconnected from the day job, uh, you, you can concentrate and try a lot because uh, this kind of uh, project is very time consuming. No, exactly. And how just how time consuming it is, we will, we will find out. I'm sure in a few minutes when you, yeah. when you take us through every line of your code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked for screen sharing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what made you decide to not only develop your own app, but develop an app that like no one that can do something no other app could do as well. I, yeah. did you, did you even know that it was possible possible before you started developing it 
I was not sure if it was uh, possible to do it on, on an iPhone. However, I, I've seen this technology before and that, uh, yeah, where, where it started. So I've seen the announcement of Phase One, quite expensive uh, camera brand, uh, in late uh, 18. They announced uh, that they can do long exposure without ND filters using frame averaging and delivering war files at the end. So it, I was just blown away by, by seeing this, all these capabilities, because I'm uh, into long exposure for, for, for a lot of years already. And uh, I struggled a lot. I've got uh, a decent uh, filter kit worth a fortune. So I did it all. And seeing this uh, simplification of this, achieving um, this kind of photographies, yeah, it was mind blowing. And then I immediately researched, is there any app out there? Because I am into phase one system, so I own a phase one myself, I'm into medium format, but the uh, IQ4 system is way too expensive for me. For it, You cannot justify 50,000 euro for just a bag. No, no way. Yeah. So I thought, I, I want to, to have this this kind of approach, it was nice, and I researched, and nothing came close to it. No iOS app available. There were some yeah, claiming doing long exposure, but for me, a long exposure is in the area of, of minutes, or even up to hours, not just a few seconds like other apps do. So <laughs> I decided, okay, I'll try it. Yeah, I, I've seen results with other systems like phase one, it's possible. So technically it's possible. And I started to research, how could I do it on iOS? Because there is no app. Normally I, I don't just start developing an app uh, just to develop an app on my own. You know? I only develop an app if there is nothing out there which uh, satisfies my, my needs. Absolutely, makes sense. And I just wanna just cl clarify something. I said then that, <laughs> This is an app that can do stuff no other app can do. Now, yes, technically Lightroom Mobile can capture raw longer exposures. However, there is a big difference and I've written them down. So I'm going to look at my, my notes here. It takes much longer to process in Lightroom than even longer does. It can only capture for five seconds. Mm -hmm. It's only available on newer devices. So like iPhone 7 and things like that can't do it. The motion blur effect is nowhere near as good as even longer's and it can't do light trails or star trails. So I think it is accurate to say that even longer is indeed the first of its kind. So that, that phase one, the IQ4 series of, of backs that you were talking about there, 50,000 plus euros and things, the, the technique you mentioned is, is frame averaging. That's, yes. uh, that's the technology behind it. So could you take me through like where, where do you even start? with that do you know anything about frame averaging before you see this phase one yeah uh, that i i didn't know before but uh, later i uh, discovered it, it was possible before so the technique of uh, frame averaging was around for a long time already so it's, it's no new invention of uh, phase one but they brought it into a camera back yeah and outside of that you could do it with with stacking uh, in Photoshop. Now my video didn't really, my stacking video didn't really illustrate just how processor intensive, how much time it actually takes to stack images and then choose the median or mean average because like this, it's not the fastest computer in the world. It's an M1 MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm working with JPEG files. I'm not even working with raw files, but you try and stack a couple hundred of these or more mm -hmm. And it takes like half an hour, 40 minutes. And yeah. often my Mac will crash and stuff like that. Whereas your app is just doing it like that. And I want to ask you about the efficiency in, in just a minute. But could you take me through like, where do you even start with frame averaging? And just the whole development process in general, like how long did it take you to get something working? What were the challenges, the successes and the surprises from the whole process? Yeah, okay. First, I, uh, as I told you, I researched what what's around there, what's coming close, where, where's the concept of long exposure on the iPhone. We, we know all um, it's only one second uh, of real shutter speed uh, you can achieve. 
So uh, the other apps uh, that there are around must do something about it. I've uh, I've seen, uh, yeah, especially one the the, the most <laughs> most used one probably, um, and I tested a, a lot and uh, I did some some pictures with a couple of seconds it was okay with a longer time it was not so okay and then i i first needed to analyze what what really frame averaging is and basically it is a pixel by pixel averaging over time yeah and uh, mm -hmm. you you have to decompose what happens you have to set your expectations uh, what what you are going to achieve how you can validate Yeah, what what you achieved? Right? You you're developing an uh, algorithm to do it first on paper, just in, in theory. Then bring it in. The problem is uh, with uh, this kind of stuff like image processing. You not uh, just have an algorithm and a thesis and prove against it with uh, with some tests you can write uh, in the system and let the system crunch numbers, and then. It says, okay, yes, expectations met. No, you have to go, really go out. You have to process full images, so 12 million pixels, to see really the effect. And it takes a long time and uh, a lot of trial and error. Some algorithms work, some not. Some work very slow. Some yeah, crash like, uh, like you've experienced with uh, stacking in Photoshop with uh, huge amounts. It will crash over time. And yeah, mm -hmm. it really took took a long time until I even got close to results I didn't like, but were technically already frame averaged results. Yeah, yeah. It, so um, how long did that actually take you? Months, a year or years? so. A, a year, I would say. So. Yeah, yeah, at least a year. And um, then. Wow. I, I found something where it could work. It worked in theory. The result uh, was was okay for a couple of frames, but the processing time was way too long. And yeah, it, it took a while. And then I all of a sudden discovered how I could do all this stuff with raw. And yeah, it was... You just discovered it? <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it was a lot of no. trial, and, <laughs> trial and error and, and uh, yeah, knowing, understanding the physics behind you know, what, what's happening, what's digital image capturing, what's involved in the process, uh, where where's the, the best point in the, the whole process to, to intercept and get the data you need for this stuff. Yeah, wide, yeah, I would say... You should get it as early as possible in the process because uh, if you you are too late, it's wasted time in processing. Yeah, you are you're processing stuff you don't know uh, and you don't need. And um, yeah, it took a while, and then all of a sudden I found it, and then there, there were really a surprise, a big surprise. When I first have seen a minutes long exposure, averaged with yeah, hundreds of images uh, in the first stage um, and seeing a raw image, the image quality was just mind-blowing. I've never seen an, an image of this quality out of an iPhone. So you all know the um, how a sky looks if you go close. Even with, with the lowest ISO on an iPhone, the sky is noisy. Oh, even yeah. On, yeah. Even on the, on the newest iPhones, it's still noisy. And then you see a frame averaged uh, raw having almost no noise, totally disappeared. And the level of detail you, you can reveal is just, just amazing. So at this stage, I was done. Okay, I decided, yes, I go for it. So it was uh, the, the proof of concept. Yeah, it took a long time to to really get this proof of concept. Proof of concept uh, development is, is hard. Yeah. You, you don't know mm -hmm. if the concept works or not, but uh, before you are building a, a full app around it, you should have the concept, the core concept work. And this was achieved, I would say, yeah, almost two years no. after I started. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Well, 
I'm I'm glad you persevered. Obviously, your work is uh, it's it's definitely come come to fruition, and myself and everyone watching, I'm sure, is very grateful that you uh, that you stuck with it. I, I do something came to mind though when you were speaking. I'm thinking about the raw your frame averaging pixel by pixel by pixel, right? And it it's in raw. I'm not sure if people are aware that what raw files actually are, they're not what you see in Lightroom after you've captured them. That's Lightroom is doing stuff on top of the raw file for you to be able to see it. Things like the mosaicing and things like that. When it's actually being, when you're recording what the sensor is, is capturing, is that data actually that big? If that, you know, just to, <laughs> to ask you simply, like I, w- I would actually imagine that the, is the JPEG, if you're doing it in JPEG, and I'm just sp- speculating here, I have no idea, mm-hmm. literally, clearly. <laughs> that might even be harder than, than a RAW because you have to do all this other stuff after you've recorded the information. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, basically, um, with, with JPEG, it's a, a smaller amount of data simply so the number quantum but at the is, end it's a smaller amount of data at the end, but yeah. before that you have to compress it's, and you have to do all this yeah but basically uh it's not the app that needs to compress it uh, it comes out of the uh, camera pipeline already compressed right so uh, you will receive as uh, the app receives something from the camera system of apple and um, this data received will be much smaller with a JPEG. I, ah, I see. So your app to, is like taking a back seat to the main pipeline. Yeah. Not your app, but the app, the app that's, um, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. So I'm with you, it now. You, as, uh, as a camera app uh, developer, you, you are deciding in which point in time you want to get what data from the camera system of Apple, which you do not control. You can can uh, do some settings on it, but uh, you you don't really control what what happens behind the scenes. And uh, then you will get, after the capture process is done, you, you will get just a data result, just a bunch of bits. And with, with JPEG for sure, it's much smaller and it takes not that longer than uh, getting the uh, the raw file yeah, because uh, the, the processing in the uh, camera system of Apple itself, it's uh, quite fast. You wrote your own, you, you created your own pipeline for this as well, right? And you wrote your own algorithm, your own APIs and things like that. I know you're still using Apple's a- a- APIs for things like metering and focusing, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just guessing. A lot of uh, stuff I'm using is, uh, of course, the, the original Apple APIs. But um, with image processing, um, you, you, you would use filter. Yeah, it, it's called CI filter, core image filters, and there are hundreds of uh, pre uh, uh, predefined filters available. You can uh, process mm-hmm. images with, uh, you you can combine images, but there's nothing uh, like do an average of one thousand images. Nothing like this. It doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah, it, it's not available there, and uh, there's this for raw files. There's nothing. You you, you can't do anything about calculating uh, stuff yeah so i i decided really to to develop my own pipeline and going into every single bit of the of the file of the data file i'm receiving wow so i do on my on my channel we like we like detail and maybe from speaking to me for the past uh, 20 minutes, you can kind of gauge what level I'm at as to how <laughs> to speak to me. So could you give me my version of like what, what the app is, is doing like behind the scenes? I don't want you to give away what your code is, what your algorithm's doing and stuff, but um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's hard without uh, giving too much away. Um, yes, yeah, simply right. thing, I'm, I'm collecting uh raw data and um, for every single frame the app receives there are millions of calculations to be done every single frame yeah so it's not only one calculation yeah. per pixel it's a couple of, uh, of calculations 
per pixel. So 12 million pixels, you can imagine what happens for every single frame. Yeah. And seeing uh, the, the frame rate now uh, up to more than 20 images uh, per second on, on the most recent iPhones, you can imagine what this means and the amount of data to be processed. Absolutely. Yeah, even longer just runs so cool <laughs> all the time. It's so cool. Uh, I, how is it? How are you able to get so efficient compared? Like I said, compared to the the Photoshop method, even Adobe. Adobe have made billions of pounds in revenue every year. Yet, you know, they can only go five seconds. You're going for I don't know how long hours probably yeah yeah it's uh, super cool like how, how is this possible it's, it's limited just by by one stupid setting i i've done to 10 hours or so but if you mm -hmm. need to go longer it, uh, it would be possible um yeah with most recent iphones probably yeah 10 hours is uh it's not even the limit of the battery yeah? so if you, yeah if you i've just... seen a few a few battery tests and this 13 pro max is getting is getting those sort of those sort of numbers. So, but that's ten hours running, like watching four K video, playing games and stuff, doing frame averaging. Maybe it could go yes, even probably. longer. Yes. Ba -bum. <laughs> 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 so, so um, <laughs> yeah. So, was the efficiency of it like a natural byproduct of? What you've created or did you purposely set out to make because this thing that needs to be purposely set out yeah because uh, we are on a mobile device and i wanted to capture mm -hmm. for, for a long time and um, i i like to to capture 10 minutes or so and uh, using the the interim files i can select uh, if i like two minutes or seven minutes or 10 minutes because 10 minutes is oftentimes too long making it boring again, uh, the image. So I, I wanted to, to have the flexibility to shoot for 10 minutes. And this several times, of course, yeah, I, I don't want to have just one 10 minute shot. I'm going out to shoot for hours, yeah? I'm going through a city yeah. and shoot really for hours. And uh, it, it accumulates uh, to total shooting time of really, really hours of uh, frame averaging. And it did not make sense for me to create something that burns my battery <laughs> so i i needed mm -hmm. to be efficient and uh, you remember maybe uh, the first release there uh, it was already pretty efficient uh, from a battery uh, life point of view but um, with yeah. let's say half the image uh, half the frame rate uh, we are at now so it was okay but now it's it's even better. But even better. Yeah. The longer is yeah. even better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, no more. Yeah. Sorry for the name, but uh, yeah, it, it it seems to play <laughs> good. <laughs> it's it's stuck now. It's stuck. Even though in my review, I I called it something you might take to increase your performance. Um, that was a sex joke. That I worded very carefully to get around YouTube's uh, <laughs> guidelines and things like that. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, need to, I need to start making jokes and take this more seriously. I know um, you're being very, very professional, and I'm just being stupid. So, um, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, but basically, so, efficiency is uh, is one of the core, uh, yeah, design. Uh, um, priorities I, I've got that's for sure no absolutely because like when I'm out shooting for a video I and you're right I'm capturing for five ten minutes on multiple occasions so five or six pictures and I'm shooting for like an hour so I need a podcast I need bluetooth going I need 4g I need all this and running as well at, at, at the same time even longer is running so um no it's definitely great to uh that you paid so much attention to that, yeah. uh, the efficiency side of things. So, I'm curious after you after you build your app, you, you get it all working. It's taking you like two years. Then you have to 
put it on the app store and you then you become like a marketer. You have to have to let people know it exists, convince them to pay for it. Like, how do you approach that? Yeah, first, um, the two years was the development of, of the core concept. Ah, okay. It did not stop there. It did, after two years, it was the moment in time to decide, okay, go for a full app, which will be usable. And at this stage, uh, I still had to uh, develop everything around this core pipeline uh, concept <laughs> right. to make it usable and uh, to wow. have a user interface, to have all the tools. I had to go out to shoot, 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 uh, test everything, not only from a technical point of view, but also from a photographer's uh, point of view. What am I missing to achieve the results I want to achieve? Yeah, so I had to integrate a level a histogram a magnification tool to to uh, support uh, a good uh, focusing and all this kind of stuff you need to develop it's it's not lying around there and i then have to to um, yeah find out how to create an histogram live histogram it's it's not uh, yeah. <laughs> something you would learn in school yeah and uh, <laughs> Then uh, you you are struggling with uh, with a level a level building a level is not that difficult and there are a lot of tutorials out there but it did not work for me like I wanted to have it yeah, it it's just jumping all over the place and it's it's very nervous and uh, does not support this real yeah slow process uh, in in this long exposure you're setting up really carefully and you, you would not like to see uh, a level tool which jumps around yeah, with something and now you, no, you can see it, it's uh, it's really a smooth uh, level so it's it's okay but it takes all time yeah every single feature needs to be developed and uh, as i told you i'm on my own and i'm not a professional um, developer so i have to find out every single part on my own which API to use, uh, what uh, Apple is offering. I am i don't like to rely on third-party uh, APIs and tools. So mm, almost 100% of even longer is, uh, is my own. There's only one exception uh, where I'm using a third-party library, which is uh, OpenSSL, which almost everybody uses uh, for uh, receipt validation. So uh, then you have to develop mm -hmm. uh, the in-app purchasing process blah 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 all this stuff it takes time so basically it took yeah, almost one more year to have a full <laughs> app yeah. because wow. I'm, I'm i'm not full-time i i can do it only on weekends and evenings and vacations yeah. so and, after you've done all that so not two years three years then how do you approach getting this out to people and having them use it and trying to see some trying to reap the fruits of your labor. Yeah, um, you, you probably remember I uh, approached uh, you and some other people, uh, something mm -hmm. about uh, April, May or so, uh, when, when the, the product was almost ready, not 100% not ready, but uh, I already included external testers to do some, uh, some tests. And um, yeah, I, I selected some people, I researched some people who already were into long exposure, preferably uh, with, with iPhone also, like you. And uh, you had some, uh, some videos and a good comparison video from the year before, uh, if I remember right, <laughs> where, where you compared uh, all the, the long exposure um, possibilities you've got with, uh, with the iPhone. Yeah, and therefore Please I don't mention you. that video. No. Uh, was good starting <laughs> point, I guess. <laughs> that was very early, early, early for me. Without, Don't go and watch that video. <laughs> without this one, you probably would not have uh, the even longer video. That's that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it's, so it's I rewarding. thank you yeah. for that. But <laughs> and I contacted uh, a lot of, not a lot, uh, but carefully selected people, not more than twenty, I would say. Uh, who really know what what's long exposure is about. And I mean also real long exposure. I reference real long exposure to be able to capture minutes. Yeah, We, we all know the seconds uh, you can do with, with the native camera app uh, and the live photos or the other app uh, 
I, I would name the spectre which I use myself uh, until today. If I, I need to have, or I want to shoot handheld uh, long exposure, which is okay for a couple of seconds, like a waterfall or so, that's fine. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. using it, yeah. But it is not yeah. uh, what what I mean with uh, with real long exposure. I like this uh, cityscapes with uh, with moving uh, clouds. Uh, this moving clouds you you cannot achieve with uh, with a couple of seconds, uh, except it's no. uh, it's extremely stormy. <laughs> Then maybe yeah. you can see some movement. But um, yeah, I like this stuff, and I want to create it with an iPhone. And I selected people who really know this, who are into shooting this kind of stuff. So they know what's the effort to, to get a result like I now can get from an iPhone. And I approached uh, people with, I would say, with, with uh, an interesting headline, which was raw long exposure on your iPhone, which at this time did not exist, for sure not. And even for most of the uh, cameras out there, it simply does not exist in, uh, mm -hmm. in the frame averaging. Yeah? And then uh, I did not tell a lot of uh, about the, the app itself. I just referenced my um, Instagram feed where I, uh, I've shown a lot of the results. And uh, this uh, made it interesting for, for some people to have a look. Okay. This kind of results are possible with the iPhone now. Great. Let's have a look. Yeah. How many people got back to you when you contacted them? More than half of them. And I, I would not name oh, uh, a lot of them, but they are yeah, really, really uh, experienced people. There are people out there shooting uh, the phase one. So they are really into it. They, they really know what to do with it. They are heavily invested in uh, in stuff to create this kind of mm -hmm. content and they were yeah, mostly blown away by what's possible with the iPhone with this app uh, and uh, feedback was great absolutely great there was nobody telling ah, that's crap only uh, some <laughs> uh, some of the, the really professionals who own this uh, very very expensive uh, kits Yeah, they think it's it's not for me. I don't get it. Why why would would you put an iPhone on a tripod when you have to carry a <laughs> tripod with you? You can carry a camera with you. Okay, maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not for everybody for sure. Yeah. So. Um... I want to ask you how some other people responded, uh, but I will tell you from my point of view and I'll tell the viewers from what happened from my point of view. So I get, I get a lot of emails from, from people and like, Hey, do check out my calculator app. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So when I saw your email, I'm, I ignored it for the first day because I thought it was another one of these, uh, <laughs> <laughs> calculator app type emails but then i actually opened it and i read it and i went to your instagram feed and it was like wow this is phenomenal so uh i was keen to keen to check it out and mario very graciously offered to um give me even longer for free um because you know in, in exchange for checking it out and making a video about it obviously that's how these things work but No, I like to support developers, folks. Uh, obviously, now maybe you've heard Mario's story. This isn't his full time, full time thing. So, um, you know, developers have to put food on the table as well. Anyway, that's a different story. And and then what? Then what happened? Uh, then what happened after that? I don't remember. I called you. We had a, a long conversation because yeah. I was keen to get as much information as I could because. I like the I like my videos so detailed and I don't want to make any mistakes, especially with something like this. And uh I think uh it was definitely worth calling you doing the extra research. But what did other people do? Did they make videos like I did? Did they make write articles? Um things like that? Um no. Except one. Oh. <laughs> Ah, okay. Except so they just one, said, uh, oh, it's great. and uh, Yeah, they, they came back uh, with a lot of feedback, but um, maybe 
for for some of this, these people, uh, it's it's too early to fully commit to to recommend it uh, completely because there 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 are people around with with uh, with huge standing without uh, within the the uh, the industry, so mm -hmm. they. Uh, getting um, yeah i'm getting some good feedback from from them and even feedback like uh, okay i've showed it to apple camera developers so so, so we, the the apple engineers uh, and they like it okay yeah so this kind of people would not yet commit to to really recommend it but uh, they can uh, provide valuable feedback and um, ah i see i see yeah it's they are liking it, but uh, they are they are hesitant to to, to really uh, recommend it. Maybe yeah. Later, I thought but... when you said yeah, let's see. Let, I'll be curious to see what 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 um, happens now that you told me that you showed it to Apple engineers. When you no, said no, you not, showed not, it to not other me. people, some, some, yeah, I I could not show it to to Apple engineers, but uh, okay. one one of my my contacts uh, I. I've shown it and I'm, I'm getting feedback from so uh, he uh, showed it to, to Apple engineers and yeah, they, they thought it was cool yeah absolutely it's um, it's funny like you, you never know I've said this a few times now like you never know who's aware of what you're doing I spoke to Lawrence Bouchard on my last episode a photographer and Apple contacted him maybe not Apple themselves but a marketing company working for Apple contacted him on Instagram and Flickr after checking out his photography, you know? So like, I'm always curious who's actually aware of what's going on mm -hmm. and things like that. But when you said you contacted other people, I, I um, thought you meant like other YouTubers were included in that as well. Or did you contact other YouTubers as well? Um, yes, some. Mm -hmm. Um, most uh, did not come back to me. Uh, one one other guy uh, did come back, but uh, did not uh, yet make a video, which is fine. It's okay, but provided some feedback, which is totally okay. And um, yeah, the 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 other one uh, who really uh, get uh, in, into closer uh, got into closer contact with me was from uh, Kelby One. Do you know Kelby One? Yeah. Um, Scott Kelby, right? Scott Kelby, and it, it was not Scott, uh, but uh, um, Eric Kuna, who is the, the vice president there, and he's, uh, yeah, they call him the, the rocket man. He's uh, shooting for SpaceX and uh, all this uh, kind of stuff, but uh, really a mm -hmm. good guy. And he, um, he tested uh, the app and used it a lot, uh, provided a lot of feedback, and uh, Kelby One uh, had an iPhone conference. Uh, the iPhone photography conference was an online conference only at the moment. Um, with, with, yeah, I would say probably more than a thousand uh, attendees. So uh, two days uh, full of courses, and they paid uh, okay a hundred bucks uh, for for attendance. So it was it was a nice uh, audience. And um, Eric uh, showed up even longer there because he believes it's it's at, at least at the moment the best uh, long exposure app uh, out there. And this kind of stuff, uh, of course, is uh, is very nice. It's it makes uh, really really a huge uh, huge difference. And it was uh, like a kickstart, yeah. So the app started at the end of May, end of June. This conference happened. Uh, your first video was out mid of june or so maybe or i'm not sure yeah exactly. somewhere around there yeah and um, yeah two weeks after you shaney was uh, was uh, catching up yeah yeah <laughs> based on your video so thanks for that yeah <laughs> it's okay <laughs> and uh, and I, I i really appreciate it and uh, i i yeah you you called me and you call you my marketing department, which is kind of true, <laughs> at least for <laughs> for a period of time. And uh, yeah, yeah, you helped me to to get a kickstart. Yeah, thanks for that. 
really it was really good i i can uh, really see in, in sales figures when uh, a new good video goes online no that's it's not my intention to market you you market yourself i just let people know what you can do and the app for me the app sells itself um i remember initially some people a lot of people got it like i i got it immediately i thought it, it was fantastic but some people were like well there was mainly just one <laughs> <laughs> why why would i pay 5.99 or whatever for even longer when slow shutter cam was 1.99 i'm like it's not the same thing whatsoever like you're just missing the point here completely but i feel now that those sort of issues from at least from what i my perception have kind of disappeared is that right because um it's a very active community from what i see yes uh, i follow you on instagram and you're constantly sharing different photographers work and i love it i i'm i've discovered so many photographers and i'm inspired by them and, and what you're sharing so are you pleased with that that side of things yes uh, it's actually the most rewarding uh, part of it to see what uh, what other creatives can uh, create with uh, with the app it's not uh, an app uh, to consume content also it's to create and seeing uh, what uh, what talented people can do with it um, oftentimes uh, I even could not do it uh, because I, I'm not that creative, probably. But uh, <laughs> it's it's really really nice and it's uh, well recognized uh, already. And most of people really really uh, like what I'm doing. And um, there are some complaints out there about the pricing, but that's okay for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mainly today, the the, uh, the most complaints are about why do I have to pay a premium after I already purchased the app? Yeah, but it's uh, it's very mm -hmm. simple. Yeah, with uh, with purchasing the app, you you get all you need to uh, get into long exposure, real long exposure, get great results already. Only limited to JPEG and missing some features like parallel bucketing or interim files, which makes life easier and of course, you are missing the raw, but raw is not for everybody. Yeah? A lot of people no. are using DSLRs even don't know how to shoot raw and why to shoot. And uh, raw can confuse people. I've got uh, some, some uh, support requests. Hey, why is this image looking that, like it is in raw? Why it's not looking like uh, the JPEG from Apple? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, yeah because... Not everybody understands what uh, what war is intended to to do. It gives you all the freedom to to development later. You need to have post produ uh, production. Yeah, it's without post processing uh, in a war image. Where's the, the point in, in shooting war? So that's uh, that's mainly the, no, the point that, that people sometimes don't get it. You know, don't get why they should pay additional. Yeah, but I'm I'm fine with it. And I, I, I really, yeah, and then they rate you one yeah. star. <laughs> yes, uh, that that happens uh, sometimes, and uh, yeah, due to stupid rules of uh, of the app store, uh, people can <laughs> can really they they are buying the app, um, rating it uh, with one star because it's too expensive, which is ridiculous because you you know the price in advance and you know you have to pay extra for more. It's clearly stated there. Yeah, what what what's the point? And Apple even allows uh, these uh, stupid ratings while refunding these people. <laughs> Sometimes they're not even buying it; they just see the price and click one star. It's uh, no. Uh, stupid, I guess right? with, without downloading the app, uh, you you can't wait the app. Oh, can you not? No, there, but uh, this uh, this kind of problem is. Uh, um, with yeah, if you you are going the premium uh, way, like Helite, for instance, does so free download with uh, and then a subscription afterwards. Mm. They initially don't pay anything, can wait, and then it's gone. So I decided to not go for free, not no free tier mm -hmm. at all. 
and hell light has yeah. no free it's, it's just a free trial yeah so and it's okay and uh, totally okay to do it uh, and if it comes to pricing of an of a camera app camera app specifically you have to keep in mind that a camera app can only be developed with testing on real devices you have to have the devices around you have to buy all the devices which come every year to test it mm -hmm. on the new devices that's kind of yeah, expensive and, yeah yeah exactly yeah. that's <laughs> what i was saying before about supporting developers and and things like that yeah and But uh, i didn't realize I, I, you had to test on the actual device yeah how how can you can you get a frame average picture of seven minutes let's say without having a device <laughs> possible. no it's, it's a good point yeah. i thought maybe you tick a little checkbox iphone 7 mm. simulate <laughs> yeah you, you can simulate a lot but uh, not the camera and uh, that's, right, yeah. that's that's true for all the camera apps out there and uh, it's simply not uh, not logical to expect from a one-time payment of a couple of yeah bucks a, a beer or a cup of coffee and expect yeah. lifetime support for every new iphone you buy yeah and people mm -hmm. expect of course if, if they they buy it they expect when they buy the next iphone that the the uh, camera app works again but it's not I, not granted i have a solution for you and i think you're going to like this you're very welcome to it by the way my data must be pretty valuable right I mean, my browsing history, I mean, come on, that's got to be worth thousand pounds a year, right? <laughs> so <laughs> why don't you just give the app away for free? Just uh, take my data and sell it. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't like uh, selling data, but however, uh, what's the value of, of data of people who don't want to buy anything? So just I know, try exactly. Try. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get uh, people who think, oh, I pay with my data and I don't spend any money. But data exactly. are only valuable <laughs> if there is money behind it. Uh, yeah, Buying intentions <laughs> are behind it. So if I would, uh, would sell data <laughs> of my pro members, that's okay. That could be maybe, a deal. Yeah. Yeah? But uh, yeah. Uh, For sure. It's, At it's this point, you stupid, they, stupid they try and get a refund on the data. Yeah. <laughs> But Can you imagine? This guy's data is useless. <laughs> Take it back. I don't want <laughs> no, um, yeah. Mario and I are just joking about a, a couple of comments that he got about uh, this uh, this sort of issue. Go back. You'll see. Go, go and watch my review of Even Longer and you will see the, the sort of comments that we're talking about. Uh, just... On that, before I uh, before I wrap up um, and ask um, ask a couple of members questions, not members, audience questions. Uh, what did you think of my review? By the way, I'm curious. Did you, did you enjoy it? Yes, for sure. It helps a lot, and uh, your reviews are yeah uh, critical. So you you are <laughs> criticizing, which is is good, which is. Uh, Yeah, makes it more valuable and more trustable uh, to people. And I, mm -hmm. most of the time, I listen also to you, of course, because it's it's part of the feedback process. Yeah, and um, if you're still with with, uh, with all your your criticism, you're still recommending the app. That's fine. So there there's room. For I don't think I criticized sure. it. Yeah, sometimes. I thought I just sure. gushed over the uh, the fact that it was raw long exposure and noise reduction, and I got to tell stories about the the, the history of photography. I, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I don't think I ever. I don't think I said anything bad in that review. To be honest, uh, maybe in the maybe light trails. Was one, a, I, maybe uh, it was a different uh, video, but it, it's fair enough. It's, yeah, I'm I'm uh, really happy to hear. This uh, this uh, honest opinions, so it's good. And if if you see something I didn't see, it's good for me to to get it recognized. Yeah. And sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't necessarily. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> especially there was one point where 
where a lot of people uh, don't agree with me, but uh, for the moment I, I I leave it like this. Is this the manual controls with the lock? The manual controls, yes. Um, yeah, for sure. I yeah. see. I see your uh, room for improvement. Uh, we just uh, yeah, based based on uh, one comment uh, in, uh, in your announcement of this interview, uh, I have seen an issue with the manual lock at the moment, which uh, mm. is really really a bad one. Um, I'm just looking is... up those uh, those questions now. Yeah, the manual lock is something I never use. I don't know. And I'm planning a tutorial for even longer, by the way. So I need to learn how to use it. I don't. I don't know how to use it. I don't know what it does. I just ignore it. And I have. I've never used it once in my whole time using even longer. Okay. That's, in, in, uh, in theory, it is uh, fairly simple. Yeah. You 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 go to to the uh, exposure uh, conversation. You see mm -hmm. your histogram, and uh, you can lock this exposure. When pressing mm -hmm. the lock button, it, it's just locking and going to all manual. Not all manual like you would expect it. Yeah, but right. uh, all manual, the I would say, the, the even longer way. So locking okay. it, it, it locks uh, a starting point of your manual exposure. What what you would do with uh, with a normal camera when you are switching to, to uh, manual, yeah, It, with with some cameras, you you can use the starting point what what's uh, what's was metered before, and then go manual from there. I, so, I think I get it now because yeah. uh, sometimes I'll set my exposure with the compensation and then I'll press the shutter, and even longer will take another exposure reading after that. So this this prevents that. Um, yes, it it prevents uh, this uh, this change. But for, for the okay. moment, uh, there, there's an issue. Maybe I, I can demonstrate uh, in, in a minute um, with the, the mm -hmm. preview. But in, in general, as soon as you are switching to, uh, to the uh, exposure lock and therefore manual, you still have um, plus minus one stop or plus minus a third of stop, which are used from, mm. uh, from DSLR shooting. And um, the desire to have full manual control to set ISO and uh, the uh, shutter speed separately comes from your experience as more professional pro uh, photographer. I do it myself and when I'm shooting DSLR as, as well, for sure. But here with, uh, with this special niche app, we've got uh, some uh, already some knowledge what you are intending to do. So we all know our yeah. uh, exposure triangle. So ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed. The f-stop stop mm -hmm. is not relevant because you cannot, you cannot change it um, on your iPhone, on any camera, yeah. at least until now. So this one is out of the equation. So you've got uh, only the ISO and the shutter speed to play with. Okay? So in normal photography, you are setting it based on, on what, what you are going to shoot. With long exposure, it's pretty clear that you are going for the longest possible shutter speed on the iPhone, which is limited to, to a second. So yeah, you, you're going for the longest. And if you reach the longest, the only the parameter you can play with is ISO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you reach the lowest ISO, which is desirable as well, the only parameter you can play with is the shutter speed. So, even longer, if, if you uh, want to have the image one stop darker than the current reading, even longer knows what to set the ISO and the shutter speeds to. There are no true interpretations. Yeah, therefore, I don't see the need. Uh, I don't see the need to individually set uh, ISO and shutter speed, which is two parameters to set. When it's enough to just say one stop, two stops darker or lighter. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, with with motion blur, I agree. I've never needed or wanted manual controls. You're right. Even longer does set the ISO as low as it possibly can. But with the light trails, I've seen these, let's just 
fake, for lack of a better word, these fake light trails, they need all the help they can get Mm -hmm. from real light trails. And sometimes when you try and shoot in in an environment that has like ambient light from a city, Eva Longer's trying to compensate for it by increasing the shutter speed, which creates that Morse code effect, as I say. And in that situation, I would like to say, no, no, don't compensate. Just I'm, I'm going to set my, my shutter speed myself. That's, that's where... You can go to, to the lock. I've, uh, just go to the lock and you see the uh, ISO and shutter speed and go in, in, uh, mm-hmm. in the direction you need. The, the, um, the physics behind is the same. It's, it's still long exposure. So you are trying to get the longest possible exposure. So longest shutter speed. Yeah. So you, mm-hmm. you, you need to get uh, to, to a second or half a second uh, with, I would say, below half a second, you will always see this Morse code effect. Yeah, even with half a second, it, it's not good. You you need to go to a second for sure, and if it's too bright, it's too bright. <laughs> it simply does not work. No, but go uh, try to, yeah. to to lock the exposure and then uh, go in the direction you need. Yeah, I will I will try the lock, and then I'll, try, I'll, try I'll the get lock. back to you. <laughs> but the lock has has one drawback at the moment, which is uh, mm-hmm. probably. Um, due to some iOS 15 issue. Yeah, let's get into that now because I have the questions up. Do you want to address that person's question? It was, uh, what was his name? Steve, Steve Morris, I think it was. Yes, yes. So I'll read out the the question. Yeah, Uh, that would be nice. App started off brilliantly. Uh, but now it really struggles with exposure. Shadows way too dark and unrecoverable, even in raw and highlights f- frequently blown out. The compensation, the exposure compensation is all over the place and makes no real difference. I am using the 12 Pro Max. Is there an issue with this model? Three question marks. He really wants to know. So you don't see it now, but um, what, what I'm going to do is uh, to show off the problem. The problem uh, basically is that uh, with exposure compensation, we are trying to adjust exposure based on the preview. And also the um, the histogram is based on the preview um, stream, which uh, Apple Camera System provides to the app. So what happens now when you're switching to manual control, the preview no longer respects the full manual control settings, but instead compensates. So you are going darker, let's say you're going two stops darker, and the preview does not show two stops. It may show half a stop or so darker, but not two stops. But the final capture will be two stops darker, which is really really, uh, a problem because you are no longer able to work with uh, with manual controls at the moment. That's so this a is an, really severe uh, issue. iOS 15 thing. I would say it's iOS 15 and uh, I even would not uh, show it with, uh, with even longer, but I would use the manual control of uh, Halide for it, mm-hmm. to demonstrate it. Yeah, it's just demonstration to, to see the effect that it's basically the same. I tried it with uh, Reflex as well. It's it's all the same. So we are all suffering from uh, from this manual control issue. So I'm, I'm just uh, starting uh, the Halide app. I've got my histogram visible and will change now to, sorry, to manual control. I'm at. Um, I'm starting out with ISO 200 or so. So I'll go down to iOS uh, to ISO 50. I would say. Yeah. So I would expect the picture to be two stops darker, but the histogram did not change a lot, and the preview did not change a lot. And I'm taking a picture now and see a picture which is two stops darker. Mm-hmm. 
interesting. I haven't seen this myself personally. I've been shooting a lot over the past few days, like 500 photos over the past few days and in different apps. Personally, I Did haven't. Did you use full manual control? Oh, yeah, always. For, or just for exposure, com exposure compensation or full manual? I never use exposure compensation for RAW. And uh, yeah, it, it's been fine for me. I don't pay attention to the preview ever when I'm shooting in RAW. I always pay mm -hmm. attention to the exposure guide and things like that. Uh, so the histogram and Yeah, but the problem the is uh, that histogram is based on preview, typically. Yeah. And uh, um, you, you, you may be fine if, if you are only compensating, let's say, half a stop or one stop uh, should not be that big of a difference with uh, wall you can uh, recover no issue mm -hmm. but uh, just try to i i sent you the the video uh, the screen recording later yeah. just try to do it with, yeah thanks. Uh, let's say compensate minus uh, two or three steps well, three yeah three stops minus uh, will will give real dark image and you don't see it in the preview It's the same uh, with uh, with the opposite direction to, to going up. And this leads really to uh, being underexposed, overexposed all over the time because you, you've got no control. Yeah, You're trying to control the system, but you, you, you cannot because you've got no feedback. Interesting. I haven't seen this. I will, I will definitely pay more attention uh, to, uh, to this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I just know what settings to use because I shoot so often. I just don't even. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> okay. Oh. In this case, full manual control uh, without any preview would help. Yeah, I will. I will get back to you on uh, on this, and uh, hopefully that answers your question, Mister Mister Steve Morris. And next, I want to ask you, Dale. Lotherington. Lotherington says, this is awesome with a smiley face. I'd love to learn the best way he suggests to use parallel bracketing in the app to get the best results. Pro member forever and love the amazing shots this app allows for. So how? Uh, what's the best way to use parallel bracketing? Okay, thanks for the question first. Yeah, parallel bra bracketing, I really only use in very, very high contrast scenes like uh, sunset over the sea or so, or sunrise, which is the same, uh, where you have to deal with this huge uh, dynamic range. With uh, with all the other stuff, uh, you, you are just fine with shooting raw to my mind and recover some highlights, uh, recover some shadows, and you are done. But in, in the extremes uh, during sunset also, uh, you just, to my mind, should uh, go for a difference of at least two stops to really benefit for it. But, um, bracketing with raw for one stop for me is isn't worth it. Yeah, because you are trading in some uh, uh, some of the frame rate. Yeah, during daylight, uh, I, I told you the maximum frame rate is about 20 uh, frames per second. With mm -hmm. the same uh, camera you will go down to roughly four to five frames per second when uh, bracketing. But uh, if you are in high contrast scenes, go for two or three stops of difference. No matter which, uh, which direction, first set your your base, uh, choose one, one as a base, the highlights, all the shadows. I tend to um, to go for, for the highlights Yeah, mm -hmm. to expose for, for the sky in, in, in this uh, case and then a bracket for three stops uh, plus to, to get the shadows uh, managed. And this will give uh, a huge range uh, with uh, three stops of difference. You've got a dynamic range extent uh, of three stops basically, which should be enough. So yeah, I... Stops, uh, of the iPhone, the, the physical 10 stops uh, we we know about or hear about will be extended to 13 stops, which is uh, very, very good. Absolutely. No, I do the exact same thing as you. Um, I think it just comes down to experience as well. Uh, being able to, again, use the exposure guides if they're not broken with iOS 15. And uh, yes. 
use your experience as, as a as a photographer and you can also take a little test shot at three seconds to see if it, if it's see what you can do with uh yes With, with the exposure for sure the, uh, the test shot of uh, three seconds uh, is uh, basically it's, it's recommended for, for a lot of situations before investing a lot of time for longer exposures and uh, yeah maybe that's uh, the only announcement of, of today I'm, oh. I'm still working on <laughs> on uh, <laughs> providing a test shot uh, uh, simple test shot uh, functionality to just not have to change the uh, total exposure time a lot if you are aiming for, for an hour or so It takes a lot of clicks uh, to to switch back and forth. I I will implement a, a test shot feature as well. Will be probably the next one I'm I'm doing. And this one could help for the current issue of the uh, missing preview as well. Oh, cool! So there you go, folks. So first we've got uh, an Android build, a Windows build, and then <laughs> test shot feature. So. <laughs> so we've got um. Mike James from Smartphone Photography Training says, this is going to be good. Can't wait. I fully agree with you, uh, Mike. My sitter says, hello. Mm. Would it be possible to have a recap table depending on the options selected? Example, what would be the best time exposure and interval for, let's say, a star trail, light trail, long exposure? I think it would be a good... Uh, I think it would be a great guide for all users of the app. So it's it's like an exposure guide. It's asking for uh, my sitter is asking for here. Yeah, in in general, there there are some uh, some best practices uh, which we could provide. Um, to be honest, uh, I did not have time to to bring it uh, together and put it on a web page as a recommendation. But in short. Uh, You know, um, waterfalls or so, a couple of seconds, 20 seconds or so will do mostly. Um, for clouds movement, a good starting point is uh, going just frame averaging for two to three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if uh, if you are going with the with the pro membership, uh, be sure to to have interim set, which really improves uh, learning what what's the, the sweet spot so i tend to just set 10 minutes of uh, total exposure and save every half a minute so for clouds movement half a minute makes a difference 15 seconds not so much no? and having uh, yeah, 20 images to select from at the end is uh, is pretty good even for experienced uh, people you really don't know if the two and a half minutes uh, one is the best one or the seven minutes one of the same scene uh, could be interesting as well. Sometimes you can use both. Yeah, You simply don't know. As you, you're getting more experienced, you probably know if it is uh, two and a half or if it is mm -hmm. seven. Yeah, But maybe both are interesting. And uh, Exactly. In the past, in the past, uh, when when going for really long exposures, uh, which is fun and gets really smooth and um, yeah, calm uh, scenes, it, it looks nice. But you can overdo it, and yeah. there's nothing uh, worse than shooting for 10 minutes and realizing, oh, it's boring now. And would I have gone for seven minutes instead? And you can't repeat it because uh, the light changed already, the clouds changed. So go for, for the interims and learn about it. And even if, if you are experienced, still use it. It's just uh, making it easier to have a choice. Yeah, yeah I use interims uh, all the time. Yeah, that's exactly. uh, for me the, the most practical feature. And um, by the way, even uh, the, um, the most expensive camera does not support this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, same with uh, with parallel black bracketing, um, the the phase one does not do it as of now. Maybe as of now, yeah. Is it? <laughs> And when it can, it'll cost know. 70,000 euros. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, I don't know if they are considering it, but um, I I know for sure they are aware of uh, even longer. So maybe they they will uh, do similar things in the future. 
So if we come uh, to to uh, other stuff like Star Trails, Star Trails uh, probably Shaney is more experienced than me, but uh, I would say uh, the trails uh, will start to look interesting not uh, before half an hour or so. I with with my limited experience in Star Trails, I find um, yeah. 40 minutes, a good starting point, but uh, going to three hours or so, two or three hours is, uh, is very nice as well. Very long, good star trails. And for for star trails, yeah, it's, unfortunately, I cannot uh, share my screen now um, to, to show some, um, some tricks for star trails. The star photography in general you you need to find your focus point, which is crucial to to really have uh, pinpoint sharp uh, stars. And that's not uh, very easy in in the dark environment. Um, and in in the past, the traditional photography with uh, with uh, DSLRs, you would have uh, oftentimes a manual lens uh, to do this kind of stuff and focus beyond uh, the uh, infinity mark. And find some point with just testing around and experienced photographers uh, into astro uh, photography, they are marking the star focus point for every lens because it differs from lens to lens. But for one lens, when when you found the the best point, there you know in uh, in traditional lenses you've got your infinity mark, and there is uh, still uh, a way to go be beyond uh, infinity typically, and somewhere in between the, the real physical end and the infinity mark, you will find the point where your lens, this particular lens, is, uh, is the sharpest. And this will not change. It can change by temperature a bit, but not too much. And in general, you could mark it. So I introduced the same concept uh, in even longer for star trails. When, when you found your focus point in star trails mode. So in, in really in dark mode, you are using the magnification, go on one star and then focus. It will take a time. Manually adjust, there is no slider in this mode. You, you just want a bit to, to uh, more distance or closer. Yeah, and you have to wait. You have to be very patient. You have to wait for a second or so. Because within this dark and dark environments, we uh, we've got the shutter speed even for preview of one second. So setting the exposure, uh, setting the focus point will take a second. The exposure itself will take a second. So be patient to see a result. Yeah, if it still improves, go in the same direction with uh, with small increments. And once you found the sweet spot for a particular camera, so it's not lens, it's, it's a camera on the iPhone, you can hit the save button. And all the time you are entering this camera in Star Trails mode, you will get to this exact focus point. So basically when, when you are doing uh, Star Trails uh, very often, for every single lens you are using, so maximum three, find your focus point once and save it. And this saving will carry over all the shots and you no longer need to, to carry, uh, care about uh, getting the focus right. It will be always on the same spot. So that's think, uh, one, one very important stuff. Yeah, no, some, some great points. Absolutely there. That's um very, very thorough, very thorough answer. I don't think uh, my... My sitter could ask for better. And uh, <laughs> what you were saying about how the app switches to one second by default in Star Trails was uh, someone asked about that, but it, it was answered very well by the uh, person in the community saying, yeah, Star Trails mode does automatically change to one second. But what, what you can do, maybe in a not so well-known feature, is if you double tap FA, you yes. can jump over Star Trails, which is like this little ingenious little hack or Easter egg, if you like, uh, in even longer to get to your light trails. No, exactly. very cool. Um, Christopher Clayton, any plans for manual controls for ISO and shutter? 
<laughs> he's already uh, he's already answered that. I'll, I'm still gonna try. I'm I'm gonna try this lock thing. I'm still not so sure, but let's see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But well, um, maybe maybe we we will have in the future, but not uh, very soon. Some more manual control. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. For the moment, there there's happening a lot behind the scenes. You you cannot influence. Most people would not even recognize, uh, for instance, uh, the frame rate goes down if you are shooting for very long. Yeah, no, so that's if you, true. If you are shooting your, your, your waterfall for an hour or so, uh, you will <laughs> not uh, get 20 frames per second because it yeah. does not make any sense. There's no point, is there? It's, again, little clever things like that that, like that, that Eva Longer is doing that people don't maybe not realize. Um, I'm going to leave the, the the viewer questions there. There's there is one more from Greg McMillan. Uh, Greg is just some old guy who hangs around, and he he is wants he more to older know. than me probably. <laughs> oh oh, he's much older than you. He'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greg still calculates his exposure by candlelight. So um. <laughs> 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 He wants to know what's the longest long exposure that you've ever captured with even longer. Uh, technically, so just for testing uh, of, of the yeah, procedure and battery life, uh, what uh, different phones can hold, it was uh, really six hours. Wow. And what did that look like? Was it decent or...? It no, it it was yeah it was still decent but it it was still uh, seen in uh, in my office. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, real because I, I I did not find any any use case uh, for me to capture for for six hours. You could do it uh, on uh, on a crowded place uh, in some some cities, but you probably would uh, would need to have a hotel room with a window facing the, um, the big place uh, and then you could try to shoot for, for hours. Maybe I, I can do it in, uh, in, <laughs> in my hometown, Magdeburg. We've got uh, a hotel on, on one of the, the big places uh, of the city. One could try, but I don't know if it's worth. But technically it, uh, it works. It's still, yeah, uh, should, if, uh... if the tripod, yeah, if, if the tripod is really, really sturdy enough and uh, or also the, the um, phone clamp or whatever you are using is really, really good enough to hold over hours exactly without moving uh, just a millimeter. Yeah, someone, uh, we should do that as a challenge somehow, who can take the longest exposure. The winner gets something. I don't know, but I will. I will think about that. But I have no other video ideas. <laughs> You'll see that video <laughs> pop up, <laughs> and you know I'm stuck creatively. <laughs> so that's that's everything that I have for now. I I could, in all honesty, I could delve deeper into lots of stuff that you said, but we would be here all night. And you know, you're a very busy guy, making even longer and doing something else that sounds too complicated for me to understand <laughs> it's full time okay. anyway and so i'm gonna leave it there do you have anything else that you want to say before we uh before we go yeah just uh, thank you for having me uh, again uh, we we had some chats already before and uh, it's really nice uh, to see how the work is uh, recognized and uh, yeah and thanks again for you personally for giving me a kickstart <laughs> <laughs> back, back in the days, uh, it really helped out a lot. So, and thanks to Good. the community. And uh, please share share all your images on on Instagram using the hashtags even longer app or shot with even longer. It's it's really yeah, nice definitely. to see, and it's it's really rewarding. And that was my conversation with Mario Tomiak. As he says, go follow him on Instagram. You will not regret it. He doesn't post himself that often, but he shares a ton of different creators, things that they've captured with even longer, things that I wouldn't even, compositions that I wouldn't even have even considered trying to do with even longer and things like that. I've discovered so many photographers through that, as I said, 
in the in our conversation. So I really enjoyed that. I learned a lot. And like if I if I was like Joe Rogan going for three hours, I would dive deeper into certain things. But you know, I'm not. And Mario is a busy guy, so I don't want to keep him for for too long. So certain points we have to move on. But you know, maybe in a few months' time, Mario can come back on, and we can um, we can pick up where we left off and fill in the blanks. So there is one thing Mario uh, mentioned after we stopped recording, and it was the fact that you can tap and hold on the grid and you get a different grid. You see that? So you get a golden ratio as well as uh, some some other more hectic grid and you get the rule of thirds as well. So that's... Uh, that's pretty cool. And um, he also mentioned about the red, some the issue with the red images. Um, again, that is something that I don't want to paraphrase Mario and get it wrong, but he is aware of it. And, you know, he's always, uh, when he can, as you, as you know now, he's a very, uh, he has a different, he has a full-time job. Even longer is his weekend and his evening job. So he may not be able to fix issues immediately but he is very well aware of them in case you didn't realize from the show the guy's a perfectionist trust me from the conversations we've had behind the scenes he is a perfectionist he wants to know if everything is right so he's definitely uh definitely aware of the issue with the images going red uh occasionally and things like that so i will end it there i will get off it's been uh, my, my longest show yet, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I just like so appreciative of people who were willing to give their time for me, for you, share their expertise, help me learn. Um, I do want to get more developers on the on the show and just just learn from them. And as my knowledge grows, hopefully I can ask some better, more technical, more detailed questions and and things like that and yeah we can just we can just explore and learn from them together from there so hope you enjoyed it guys let me know what you think in the comments below and i don't know how this is working on apple podcasts can you can't comment on apple podcasts leave me a review yeah do that leave me a review please <laughs> on apple podcasts if you're listening five stars leave, leave me a five star review uh, let's get this uh, show the highest rated show on Apple Podcasts <laughs> in the iPhone in the iPhone photography section. Are there any others? I don't even know. I'm just so busy making videos at the moment. I haven't even had a chance to look at listen to podcasts or anything like that. I'm just cranking and cranking and cranking, as you will see. Go head over to my YouTube channel, David Addison. Just search David Addison, and my face will pop up in an orange jump in an orange coat. I think that's my YouTube channel. If you're not aware, check out these videos of which I speak. And I will let you go now. Take care, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.